Glutathione may be the most important peptide in your body. And the good news is that your body makes its own glutathione supply. It is often called the master antioxidant and detoxifier, and it may greatly slow the aging process. Now, in this video, I would explain what glutathione is, why levels are much lower for many people than they should be, and I will give you six ways to significantly increase your glutathione levels. Now, glutathione helps us fight infections, it decreases inflammation, it recycles antioxidants like vitamin C and E, and that's actually a very important function there. It neutralizes free radicals. Again, these build up all the time, right, from cellular metabolism and normal energy production in our mitochondria. It binds and helps us get rid of heavy metals and toxins, promotes healthy cellular metabolism, and it improves mitochondrial health. It supports muscle development and decreases fat storage. So that's quite a bit, and it sounds almost too good to be true, but these are the amazing effects of glutathione. Differences in glutathione levels may be one reason why some people age significantly faster than others. Now, healthy cells have a very high concentration of glutathione in general. They're similar to really levels of uh, potassium or cholesterol. Levels of glutathione are highest in young and healthy people, and they decrease with age and disease. The lowest levels have been reported in extremely sick people in the ICU. So you can see why we do want more glutathione. The problem today is that we are exposed to more pollutants and toxins than ever before. And unfortunately, most of those we created ourselves, right? And our glutathione production can often not keep up with the demand. Furthermore, almost 50% of the population has a GSTM1 gene abnormality, significantly decreasing the production of glutathione. And a similar number of people also may have an MTHFR gene abnormality, which further decreases the production of uh, glutathione due to impaired methylation capability. So there's these pathways where uh, some of the compounds have to be methylated, and if that's impaired, we're really impairing the production of glutathione, right? Low levels of glutathione significantly increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, dementia, autoimmune disorders, as well as accelerate aging, as I've mentioned before. Now, some people opt to do genetic testing to see if they are affected with either one of these genetic abnormalities. Um, again, that's debatable if that's necessary or not. I generally don't recommend it because ultimately we all want more glutathione. You might be a bit more motivated to work on your glutathione levels if you have this abnormality. But other than that, it doesn't change a whole lot, in my opinion. Now, another hallmark of low glutathione is higher levels of homocysteine. Um, and this can also be measured on a blood test. So if you have very high levels of homocysteine, this is actually a very bad state to be in. And one of the reasons might be that your glutathione production is slow, and it's possibly slow because you have one of these genetic abnormalities, because they're just very prevalent, right? The good news is that we can increase our glutathione levels through supplements, foods, and other measures. So even if we have this genetic abnormality, that's not the end of the world, in my opinion. We can do a lot of things to optimize and increase our levels of glutathione. So whether or not you want to get tested, again, up to you. I don't do it. I haven't done it on myself. People do it sometimes, but that's really something that uh, is strongly debatable. Some people do this 23andMe test, genetic test. You then have to go through some additional steps and you have to talk to some other companies to really figure out if you have these specific genetic abnormalities that lead to low glutathione production. So it's a costly, long process. Also, your genetic data will be out there. How well they are uh, safeguarded, I don't know. Again, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit crazy about it. I did not do 23andMe. And again, I didn't test for uh, my levels of these genes uh, or, or functionality of these genes either, right? So here are the six uh, things that we can do that significantly increase our levels of glutathione. Number one, supplements. N-acetylcysteine, and you may not have heard of this, it's a fantastic supplement. I just recently started taking this because I think it's really fantastic and it tremendously helps with glutathione production amongst other things. So the cysteine product, uh, prodrug, N-acetylcysteine, supplies the cysteine that's necessary for the glutathione synthesis. So there are three amino acids that we need to make glutathione, cysteine, uh, glycine, and glutamic acid, right? And um, of these, only the cysteine contains sulfur. Therefore, the cysteine can be thought of as the rate-limiting step for the production of glutathione. Now, I'm currently taking, and this is not medical advice, always talk to your primary care doctor if you should take a supplement or not, but I'm taking 600 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine daily. And again, besides uh, helping with the production of glutathione, 
it has other benefits that I'll talk about in another video. Um, other supplements are methylated folate and methylcobalamin, so methylated vitamin B12. Now, the methylated form of these two vitamins is especially important if you have an MTHFR genetic uh, problem, as it, this decreases, of course, your ability to methylate B12 and B9. Now, vitamin B12 and B9, when we take them in through normal supplements, need to be methylated. And um, B12 and B9 are cofactors in the production of glutathione, so we need them. But the methylation of uh, B12 and B9 can be compromised, again, if you have a genetic uh, issue with this. So getting it in, in the methylated form bypasses this first step and makes it just in general more available to your body. So even if you don't have any genetic abnormality there, I would still recommend to try to take in these vitamins in the methylated state as it's just much better and easier for your system to process, right? Step number two, glutathione injections. Yes, you can just really inject this stuff. So you can use this via intramuscular intravenous injections. Now, this is, of course, not practical or financially feasible for many people. Since I'm at the source, I have this in my clinic, I generally do an intramuscular injection with 400 milligrams of glutathione every one to two weeks. Um, I find it's very helpful, especially in times of you know uh, viral disease like the flu season to do this. Also, when you think about it, if you have a high burden due to pollutants, uh, you know, other uh, factors that might be in there, or toxins or heavy metals, uh, then, you know, injecting glutathione might be very helpful because you can really increase, you can boost up those levels much more than you could with your natural production. And when we think about heavy metal toxicity, we can get from overconsumption of fish, for example, glutathione is a chelating agent as well. So, you know, it binds and transports out these heavy metals in a very gentle way. This is not a fast process. It's not a chemical chelating agent, which is something that I would actually not recommend for most people because there are a lot of dangers associated with that. I wouldn't really want to do that. But glutathione is a natural chelator that at a very gentle state takes these toxins out of your body. And uh, injecting it gives you, especially when you have a high burden of heavy metals, a good opportunity to get rid of them a lot faster than you would be, right? Step number three, increase other antioxidants like, for example, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin C, and vitamin E. So these antioxidants, they will not directly increase the production of glutathione, but they will decrease the toxic load that your body has to deal with. So therefore, you need less glutathione, right? So you're just taking the work away from glutathione. So you're helping your glutathione levels out, and then your levels might be sufficient. Again, when we're overburdening our system with uh, pollutants, toxins, and so on, free radicals that we produce when we um, you know, just do a normal carbohydrate metabolism, right? citric acid cycle, when we actually, in our energy production, ATP production, in carbohydrate metabolism, we produce a lot of um, free radicals. That's just part of that. It can be somewhat changed when we switch to a ketogenic diet. It's something that then runs a lot cleaner. We produce less of these uh, free radicals. Um, there are some drawbacks. Again, for some people, they thrive on this even long-term. Some people can only do a short-term. That depends. But in our general energy metabolism, we build up toxins every day. And so when we have a high burden of these toxins, then glutathione can be extremely helpful to decrease that and make our cells and our body healthier again, right? All right, um, sulfur-containing foods. We're talking about cruciferous vegetables like you know onion, garlic, uh, or broccoli, those kind of things, and cauliflower. Uh, eggs, nuts, legumes, and meats. Now, I eat eggs, nuts, legumes, and meats. I have no problems with that. I do not eat garlic, uh, broccoli, and onions. That's not my thing. Um, I do once in a while take in a um, powdered greens that I put in my protein shake. I do it actually now lately almost every day. That will give you some of this stuff as well. Um, it doesn't agree with me very well. I don't like it. Um, but some people that do like these vegetables, this is very helpful. Again, these contain sulfur. Sulfur is very necessary to make glutathione. It can be thought of a bit as a rate-limiting step. So supplying enough of this raw material can be very helpful in the production of glutathione. So if you have issues with the glutathione, that's one way you can increase the production by, by you know, increasing the supply of this uh, particular uh, nutrient, right? Exercise, and this is very interesting. Regular exercise is number five, uh, is helpful in small amounts. We're talking about half hour to one hour with uh, intermediate intensity. If you do high intensity, marathons, half marathons, or three hours in the gym, you might actually decrease your glutathione levels. So this is very much dependent on how much of this you use. So again, moderate exercise, I'd say three to four times a week, uh, half hour to one hour can certainly boost your levels up. So very helpful. 
Overexercising drops the levels down, right? So that's something to consider here. And then uh, number six, of course, decreasing your exposure to heavy metals and pollutants, right? Of course, easier said than done. But when you think about it, the less pollutants we come in contact with, the less of these ex you know, uh, exogenous things we take into our body that our body has to clean up, that our glutathione sponge has to take up and transport out, the less glutathione we need and the more we might be okay with our current production. As we have a higher burden, as we age, as we have inflammation, as we have all these other issues, pollutants and whatnot, we will need to make more glutathione or, you know, we would have to help it uh, by supplementation or by taking in glutathione, and again, an injection or IV um, to really help our system out to get rid of some of these pollutants that are building up in our system, right? So if you implement these six strategies, you will make more glutathione, you will optimize your glutathione. You don't have to implement all of those, of course. I think the injections are very impractical for most people. But the other ones certainly are things that uh, we can we can try. Again, always ask your primary care doctor before you start any supplement. Um, I think it's important whether or not we have a genetic abnormality, we should all strive to optimize our glutathione levels because that really optimizes our health. So uh, please subscribe and leave a comment or question. I will definitely read those. And I'm very interested to hear what kind of um, strategies you uh, uh, use to optimize your growth levels, especially when it comes to nutrition.